Right, the next one that we're going to do is the uh, tutorial area light faking start max scene, which is in which is on the DVD. Okay, what we're going to do in this one is we're going to try and fake a uh, area light uh, using the standard uh, uh, lighting system within 2ds Max. So uh, you need to load this in. So it's basically going to be uh, obviously building this up at the moment. So uh, it's going to be the uh, tutorial area lights faking start. And any if any box pops up, like for example, saying uh, you need to accept uh, scene scale change, accept the scene scale change, otherwise uh, you might get a different result from what I'm doing here. Okay, you got your coffee, two sugars, lovely. Right, <laughs> let's have a go at this then. Uh, I'm just going to kill off that for starters. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a number of Omni lights to simulate a inverse square decay. So it's more of a, like a realistic fall off over these number of boxes here. So we'll get like a nice decay of an, an strength light coming off here. So what we should have, I just switch to this top viewport and so we can see this clearly. What I'll show you is because we've got this large area light here, this large cylinder, which is going to simulate illumination. Um, because in real life we've got millions of photons all the way across that are being emitted in various different directions. What we would normally have is like this particular light, this particular point over here would obviously be casting light in this direction. So therefore we would get a light ray going across there, hitting the side of this box and therefore we will get a shadow over this side. If we do it from over here, we'll basically get a light ray going across this way, and we'll obviously get a shadow uh, accordingly as well. So therefore what we would have, if we sample it all the way across, we'd have multiple directions of shadows going across here, for example. So we'll get this kind of like feathered effect with like a stronger point of shadow across this region here and feathering out less so over here so we got a little bit here and so on so this is the type of effect that we're trying to simulate now you can't do this natively with the standard lights unless you use one of the area lights which obviously takes long to render so it's it's often easier to simulate this with the standard point lights <coughs> So that's what we're basically going to do. So if you imagine these millions of photons all the way scattered across the length of this cylinder, this area of light, we want to create something that's something along the same kind of lines, like by scattering number of lights all the way down it and around it. Um, just a fair, just a few of them, not not obviously a million of them. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll just start off in the top viewport, obviously uh, by um, creating the light at ground level. Um, uh, Max now decides to use the actual lights that we've introduced to illuminate the scene and obviously because it's now at ground level we don't see anything until we actually move it up. Okay so what we need to do is obviously label everything so we'll call this Omni Strip Light 01 and what we're going to do first is we're just going to scatter them across this tube and then we'll start worrying about the properties afterwards. Let's just get them in situ first. So for this, what we're going to do, if I just go to perspective, um, what I'm going to do is if you notice on here, we've got like a, a helix, which is wrapped around the length of the cylinder. So we can use that to actually distribute the lights along this particular object. So if we go to tool with the light selector, we go to tools and then what we'll do is we'll go to, uh, let's go to array, actually no, let's go to the spacing tool and then we can pick the path by choosing our helix. So basically what I've done there is either by selecting select by name or pressing H, I just press H, it gives us the actual list that we can actually specify so we choose that guy and we can see straight away let's just apply that um, we've got a number of lights in this particular scene 
So what we need to do is we need to create a number of those. So let's go back in there and choose our path again. And then what we need to do is obviously we need to create a number of these so they are scattered evenly over. I'm just going to use, I'm going to do 21. Now we can obviously specify the amount of count, the spacing, how much offset at the start or at the end, uh, any specific di um, distribution types. But we basically just need it divide uh, divide evenly objects to ends. Um, type of object that we want to use is uh, an instance. So whatever value that we change to one obviously changes to the rest of them. If we just did it with a copy, then we'd obviously have to change every single one. That would obviously be you know take a stupid amount of time. So if we have the option to instance something, then do it. Uh, this goes not only for lights but objects, uh, cameras, um, anything. Okay, and apply that. We can close that now. Now this particular light obviously hasn't been relocated, so we can obviously now get rid of that. We can't just turn it off because if we turn it off as it's an instance, we can it will basically do it for every single one. <coughs> so what we need to do now again is if we just position this, let's actually do it from let's put it in the top viewport. Then I'm going to actually let's just scoot around there. Okay, so if I render that out now. We see that it's exceptionally bright because every single light has a value of one. So therefore the entire scene is now being blown out. Even if I turn on shadow maps by default, um, don't forget we're using the last shadow map value settings. So obviously the sample range, because the last time we used it, which was in the uh, introduction, we had a sample range of 50. So I'm going to put that back to the default value of four, just for starters. Render that out. And you'll see that it's still pretty much blown out, but we start to get this kind of triangular effect. Now we'll sort this shadow map values out shortly, but what we need to do now is we need to sort out the um, uh, the fall off, the decay from this particular light. So first things first, let's use inverse square decay, and then we need to enable show. So we can see how big this decay is from each of these lights. Now. This is relatively about the right size that we need to use. So if we just scoot in there, you can see that it's about roughly about the same width as the tube itself. So if I render this out now, it will go pretty much to black. I mean, this, this is obviously a self-illuminated material, so this is why we're seeing this. But because the decay is so short uh, and also the multiply value is now low. Again, remember what I said in the uh, the first uh, lesson, which was um, you only need to crank this multiply value up if you use an inverse square decay. So let's put it up to a value of 10. And let's see whether or not we get any illumination on the ground. Now we're starting to get some illumination on the ground now. So let's just crank that up a little bit further. Let's put it up to 20. Now we're starting to get this kind of feathered effect around here and some more illumination. Let's just do one more. Let's put it up to let's put it up to 35. Again, if we'd done this to start off with one light and then done it all the way across, we wouldn't obviously be able to design our lights correctly. Basically because we would only have one piece of illumination that obviously wouldn't be bright enough. So we wouldn't get the feathered effect to check and we wouldn't be able to get the um, the throw across the lights as well. So let's just one more, let's just put it up to 40. So we get a nice, not blown out light effect. One more. That's a bit too high that is, let's put it to 45. <clears throat> That's about right. So if I swing back round now, we can see this kind of nice feathered effect that's starting to occur. Now, one thing that you will notice, if I just zoom in and render that, is that we're starting to see some banding here because obviously each band is a different shadow. Now, this is where the sample range kicks in. So what we can do now is we can either double, we can double this, let's put that up to eight, and we should see some of these bands start to disappear. Um, still got a few around here and it's just taking a little bit too long to render for my liking. So what I'll do is we'll take 
this down will halve that value and obviously because we've half that value the banding's virtually about gone and it's got the kind of right diffusion so what we're going to do is we're going to half that value as well so we're keeping the same amount of blurriness overall but we're actually going to it's going to take less time to render so that's getting it's just about getting that. i'm just going to push that up to six just to blow it a touch more and that is just about right so what we've done is when we've simulated an area light effect using the standard lights so we've got the correct shadow fall off for that type of light now obviously what we can do now is we can obviously you know let's hide these guys and we can obviously put any other light in there that or any other object sorry that we want in there so let's i'm just going to drop a, a sphere in situ put that so it's sitting directly above the ground and i'm going to give it a uh, let's give it a let's give it a ready type material and I'm going to give it a bit of specularity assign that to that and I'm going to render this guy out and we should see a nice more defined shadow effect so we've got this kind of nice feathered effect here Let's just increase that size so we can see it clearly. So we've got a nicer dithered effect that's more realistic to the type of light that we're trying to simulate. Now one thing that we don't see is obviously the reflection of this particular um, <coughs> this particular light type within the object. Now the reason for that is because the actual uh, ball itself isn't reflective at all so what we need to do is obviously assign a reflection to it which obviously we're going to use a ray trace material uh, ray trace map within the reflection slot so if I render that out now we should start seeing let's just scoot around here let's have another look we should see there we go you see it's very very faint but what we can do with that is we can increase the intensity of that but the reason being it's so faint is because this value is only up to 255 what we need to do is we need to crank that up more by simply adding an output in there and let's just double that and we should now see if you just get in a bit closer the light being emitted from it, the actual uh, stronger reflection. Okay, so obviously got our nice uh, reflection on the ground, got our light visible, it's obviously the dark area is obviously the environment, got the nice shadows kicking off so it's like it, giving us a more realistic effect, just increase that, let's pull it up to 64 so we've got some nicer, so we get less jagged edges around and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to in our uh, shiny, uh, shiny material here I'm just going to get rid of that ray trace and just limit the ray trace so it is on the sides so it gives like a painterly effect so to do that I'm using a fall off map and then in the side slot I'm just going to drop in the ray trace so the ray trace uh, reflection is only mainly prominent on the side so rendering that out it's given us a more natural uh, shine to it okay um, thus and the lesson. See you on the next one. Get another coffee. Bye.